Hey there, I'm Heather, the artist behind Heart Key Creations. Today, we're going to take a look at part one of my very first full oil painting and see, well, we're going to see me play because that's kind of how I started out with this was I just decided that, well, I've never used oils before and I have no idea what I'm going to do, so let's just play because I don't know how to use these things yet. I decided on doing, well, I thought I was going to do just a landscape, just a easy little sky background, grass on the ground, and some trees in the foreground, just to get a feel for the oils. And I end, after I did, the, did that, I actually decided that I needed more trees and a dragon in there because it just wouldn't leave my mind. I needed that dragon and more trees. So <clears throat> by the end of this, you'll see the beginnings of my dragon. Right now, so I started out by putting some linseed oil on a already pre-ready canvas. Didn't do anything extra to the canvas at all other than I laid down a layer of linseed oil which may have been a mistake because that first layer took like two weeks to cure <laughs> but I was learning now I know better I won't do that anymore unless I really want I'm doing a really big piece or something that I need a lot of time to be able to work wet on wet and blend easy and and so this whole first part that we we're seeing right now is all wet on wet blending techniques and layering because everything is very, very wet still. The only oil paints that I had at this point in time, the only colors are the oil paints that came in the Gamblin 1980 set. So I'm very limited to I think I ended up, I think I did end up using every single color in, in that palette just so that I could kind of get a feel for what they were, um, or, or, and blended some of them to even, yeah, I think so. I think I did. So there's like six, I think, in the palette, and it came with the non-solvent gel so that you could thicken it up more if you wanted to. I did not use any of that in this because I used most of what came in that packet or in that tube in my fluid oil paints, trying to keep them from being a watery consistency after I thinned them out. However, I don't think I'll do that again. There's updates on that soon too. <laughs> um, so. I'm just drawing in the trees. Everything is completely free-handed in this and very loose. Just trying to get a feel for using the oil paints. I'm sorry about that glare on the top and I'm sorry about some of the cut jumps that come in and out of this and an entire skipped area of the painting in progress because of my crappy camera. I did actually order a new camera and a arm stand for it, so hopefully I can get rid of a lot of that glare that I get a lot of times, depending on the position or the medium that I'm working in. Um, hopefully that will be here Tuesday, and definitely my next project will have use of some of that camera. I decided to put out this little ditty today, this little piece of my art of the oil painting instead of doing it as a whole piece for two reasons. One, oil takes a really long time to cure, so it's going to take me a long time to actually finish this piece. And two, I didn't actually have a finished project this week to do for you guys. Work has been really busy, and I just haven't had time to do a full project. I 
my the current project that I'm working on is actually larger than what I usually do and more detailed. So yeah, that's that's why we're getting this today. Um, yep. So all I'm doing is going back and forth and blending out that sky again because when I put the trees in, I smudged. And there's the area that is missing the entire part where I added in the other trees and some leaves. And now I'm just freehanding in my dragon. I decided to do it in the white, just the outline of it, so that because I wasn't sure what color I actually was going to do it in in the end, I thought I wanted to stay away from my purple because I use purple in everything. That didn't work out in the end, as you'll see. But <clears throat> so I thought maybe I would just do a black and white dragon. So I started it out in the white and doing the tail. I decided the tail is going to weave in and out of those trees in the background there. So just kind of shaping it all out, getting a good outline. And see, there is a lot of those cut jumps and stuff in there because my camera kept cutting out on me. <coughs> I'm sorry about my voice and everything today. It's very, very nasally. But uh, allergies, yeah, they're a thing. So the thing I, I, I really discovered I like with the oils is, yeah, blending really is very easy and in some cases it's way too easy so you'll see me on occasion kind of going back and forth and um, repainting what I blended out way too much of but that's the other easy thing with oils is and it's easy to do that just add a little more paint the brush strokes in oil will stay if you load your brush enough. If you don't want them to stay, they don't have to. You can blend them out completely. I uh, I like some of the brush strokes, especially if I'm doing something you know with feathers or fur, because it just helps add the texture and depth and dimension that I am looking for. So here, I'm starting to add in some of that black uh, for the shading, you know, doing uh, the uh, shadows first and just adding in some of the color uh, in between what I think is going to be the color anyway, in between. <coughs> Marking out where the nose, was, nose is going to be and the eye is. and. I decided that my dragon was going to be a feathered dragon, it, so the wing is feathers. My son said to me, I have never seen a dragon with feathers. There's, there's no dragons with feathers. I said, yes there is. Dragons have feathers. You can have feathers. He's like, I've never seen one. I said, just Google dragons with feathers. He's like, well, of course I'm going to get dragons with feathers if I drag if I Google dragons with feathers. I said, fine. So I Googled just the word dragon. And the second picture that came up was a picture of a dragon with feather wings. So he was a little disappointed that I was right. <laughs> It'll be 17 in October. So, you know, he's got to be right. But he wasn't. He's a good kid, really. <clears throat> so, now I'm going down and adding. So, it is straight black that I'm using over top of that white, but because that white is still wet, I'm getting that gray color, which is perfectly fine. It's exactly what I wanted. So, and I, of course, go into that tree a little bit and and not happy about it, so I'm wearing gloves, so I just tried to wipe it off. 
and it didn't work. I actually had to go back and paint it over again. Um, and here's where I decided, yep, I'm not liking the black and white. I have to go with my purple. So here goes purple. For a lot of this, I am just using the very tip of that brush and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it at all because the oil is wet and it just, you know, if you using the a wet and wet technique, if you put a lot of pressure on the brush, you're just, you're blending it right away. You're definitely not getting any layering or any depth in there because the color is just going to blend together and create a different color, sometimes a muddy color, really a muddy color because, you know, we like to use contrasting colors, right? Um, but if you just use the tip and go very light, it won't blend all together and make a big mess. It'll blend nicely together with some pretty brush strokes and dimension and give you the look that you want. As long as that is the look that you want. So getting more color in there and then I'm going to use the very very tip of the brush to bring the shadows in around the tail where it weaves in and out of the trees because you know where it's behind that tree the tail as it's going in and out is going to be a little bit darker than the rest of it so it is, it, it's just that very, very tip of that brush because it's kind of a small area. The painting is actually only a nine by 12. It may actually only be an eight by 10, honestly. But um, yeah, so it's not a huge painting. Like I said, I really just wanted to play. I, I needed to figure out how, you know, if I liked using the oils, if I, what it is that I like about them and if I could if I could use them I think I'm doing okay here and especially I really had absolutely no idea as to what I was going to do in the end like I had no there there's no planning no pre-planning at all it just was Okay, well, I'm going to do this just to see, and then I went to bed that night, and this dragon weaving in and out of the trees kind of popped into my head and wouldn't go away. So, while I'm blending out some of that purple, the, the shadows, I'm picking up some really light, uh, some, some of the lighter purple in there, and here I'm just going through and adding some of that light purple into the wing for some highlights. And as I do that, I pick up some of the dark purple on the brush. So I just take some of that dark purple and bring it up into the back and neck and head for some shadows. It's really, oil's very nice to work with as far as that goes. I'm discovering it's you know, there's like no wasted paint. There's not a lot of going back and forth between my paint or, you know, into the, from, from the painting into the palette. And it's, I like it. And so there I just picked up some straight white on the brush and <clears throat> put it into the wings and blended it out to make some feathery, like d designs in between that I actually did completely clean out my brush so it was just the white that was on the brush in between a lot of my other layering I didn't completely clean out the brush I let the other color stay in there um, but for the white 
I wanted to make sure that that white showed up and did what I wanted it to do and just give me some feather like uh, looks and it did so you can see that the first the first strokes that you put down are kind of heavy you just go back over them and blend them out a little bit and up on top I decided she needed a little plumage so I gave her a feathery plumage and let that dry for a little bit and went in and highlighted the face a little bit more and the neck and the back and I haven't quite decided I still haven't decided if I'm going to make her body feathered and or just kind of let it be kind of smooth I guess it would be really the word I, I don't think I'm gonna do scales but I haven't decided if she's gonna be a smooth or feathered body so up on top I am just putting in some shadows and coloring in the plumage so it doesn't look like it's just flat on top of her head and uh, yeah it, it gives her a little little decoration I guess <clears throat> just adding more shadows <laughs> more layers I definitely work a lot the same with oils that I do with the acrylics and do a lot of layering thin layers on top of thin layers and with the oils I think it may actually I don't know that it works any better or any differently honestly than it does with the acrylics but for me that definitely seems to work as my technique no matter what medium I'm working in I guess <laughs> just a thin layer on top of a thin layer on top of a thin layer and build it up till you get it to be where you want it to be <clears throat> this is really about the end of what I've gotten accomplished with this piece so far it's been a couple of weeks I will probably pick it up again in a little bit after I finish my next project um, what I noticed here while I was working on it towards the end was that I was actually starting to pick up some of the paint again so I was actually creating spots that went right back down to the canvas almost or at least down to that first layer so I had to stop and let it dry all right there will be more to come if you liked it, please like it, share, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you next time.